Thank you for joining us for the next in a series of videos examining the challenges of treating high-grade glioma. Be sure to visit the website shown on screen to see all the videos and access additional content. Let's look now at the role of pseudoprogression in disease management. So I think the concept of pseudoprogression is one that's really important. And so as we treat these patients, sometimes their scans look worse. And that can either be for radiation reasons, it could be for immune therapy reasons. And really understanding that just because the scan looks worse, that doesn't mean your therapy isn't working. Your therapy could actually be working very well and you need to stay the course. And making both other physicians as well as the patients aware of that and kind of getting that commitment and buy-in to having the right assessment and deciding whether you're going to stay on your therapy or not, yeah, I think is a really important point. Pseudoprogression typically occurs within three months from completion of chemoradiation. Therefore, it's really important to let patients know that their images might look worse before uh, things improve. Uh, by letting patients know, that, that way they won't have the anxiety that comes with uh, seeing that their scans are worse. From a surgeon's perspective, uh, pseudoprogression requires a, a careful assessment of the relative risk of the surgery, which is really required to make the definitive diagnosis and the benefit that the patient derives. Uh, in many instances, timely surgery will allow us to understand whether there's true tumor progression. And if that happens, we could quickly start the patient on another therapy or enroll the patient in a clinical trial. These benefits have to be weighed very, very carefully against the potential risk of surgery. And that's a decision that I think it's best, best made through a multidisciplinary board in the context of patient preference. And I think there's also that new aspect of immune pseudoprogression where if we really are getting to stimulate the immune system and mounting a response to the tumor, we don't entirely know what that looks like. And scans could look worse if you really are starting to engage the immune system and you might need a biopsy to kind of help figure that out. So certainly not uh, stopping therapy that is actually working too early. I think that's a real concern with immunotherapies. And certainly with advanced imaging, that's been also helpful in terms of giving us a hint of what might be going on. So if there's decreased perfusion, that can be a little bit reassuring that we can uh, follow patients. And again, I, we need to have a thoughtful consideration in terms of at what point do we pull the trigger for surgery? At what point do we start a new therapy? At what point do we continue the therapy uh, because we believe there's benefits? Again, a very difficult decision today and a decision that is best rendered uh, through collaborative discussion. Careful consideration of pseudoprogression is needed in the evaluation of therapeutic response.